Doctor, were you involved in an autopsy of Tylee Ryan? Yes. When did that take place? It started on the same day as JJ's case. After we finished JJ's case on June 11, 2020, uh, we took a very short break and then we started Tylee's case. Okay. And was that then also at the Ada County Coroner's Office? Yes. Um, how did that autopsy commence? What did you first observe? Uh, so this autopsy was different. Um, the vast majority of the times when I perform an autopsy, uh, I get an entire body, and there's a very, there's a process that we went through, like with JJ, that I go through. Um, Tylee's case was different. Um, it was received by me um, in, or Tylee's remains were received in three separate sealed bags. Um, one of the bags, or two of the bags, were black body bags, and the third was a large brown paper bag uh, that was sealed, and within that contained five other um, paper bags within it. Um, so I received, essentially I received Tylee's um, remains in multiple different bags. Okay. How long did that autopsy last? That autopsy lasted, um, it was much longer uh, because of the process of uh, sifting through the remains, trying to identify bones, soft tissue, uh, multiple x-rays, cleaning the bones, getting them ready for anthropology. Um, it, it took on the order of several days, but probably about a week. Okay. And I'm sorry, did you just say you x-rayed that material? Yes, we x-rayed all the bags and all the material that we received. And what was the purpose of those x-rays? You do that um, in order, you're you're looking for uh, one, what kind of possible remains you have, how many bones can you see in the x-rays, um, so what are we kind of looking at as far as how much do we receive. Uh, you're also looking for foreign objects. <coughs> Most importantly, you're looking for projectiles such as a bullet. Uh, in this case, you know, we had to keep an open mind. We were looking for anything, you know, bullets. Um, is there any portion of a knife? Is there any other foreign debris uh, that can be found on x-rays that we could collect as evidence? Okay, and did you find anything with those x-rays? There were no projectiles. Uh, there were no uh, portions or pieces of weapons. Um, essentially what we saw was um, collections of bones um, in most of them along with other debris you could see um, there's a lot of mud, a lot of um, dirt um, that came up on the x-rays as well. Okay. Uh, based on the remains you received, were you able to do any types of toxicology? Yes. Uh, how, how were you able to do that? So in this case, um, with the remains, uh, there was no blood to send, there was no urine, no vitreous fluid. Um, so one sample that can be used for toxicology is skeletal muscle. And uh, in this particular case, there were um, large pieces of identifiable skeletal muscle. Uh, so I cut into the skeletal muscle and I got the best tissue that I could and then we send that for toxicology. And did you receive reports of that toxicology? Yes. Uh, what were the results of that? So I believe uh, it came back positive for ibuprofen. It came back for a common decompositional product that we see in most cases of decomposition. Uh, it came back with 
uh, a carbon monoxide level, uh, a carboxyhemoglobin saturation level, and also oh, sorry, a carboxyhemoglobin saturation level, and also iron. So just to explain the iron, carboxyhemoglobin, those. Um, so any kind of any kind of fire death, and in this case we knew we were dealing with uh, burnt remains. Um, we we tested for carboxyhemoglobin. So carboxyhemoglobin um, or carbon monoxide in fire is often released um, along with multiple other gases. And if that is breathed in and the person is alive, then you'll get a high carboxyhemoglobin saturation level. So that's why we even did that test. In, the, in this particular uh, case, the carboxyhema, uh, or the ca carbon monoxide level came back extremely low, um, meaning that there was, th there's no evidence to support that Ty Lee was alive when she was burned. Uh, skeletal muscle is not the best sample to test for that. Blood is, but skeletal could give you a, a, an idea. Okay. Were you able to find and identify any um, organs? Yes. Uh, what did you find? So amongst the debris of um, the dismembered body, we were able to find, uh, I was able to find the heart. I was able to find, and it was actually connected still to the right and the left lung. Um, I was able to find one kidney. Um, I was able to find a few small segments of bowel. I was able to find portions of a liver, and also there were very small fragments of brain matter. Now, with, with that being said, um, this this was not like in JJ's where the organs were very still intact and easily identifiable. Uh, these organs had severe decomposition. Um, they had significant burning artifact. They were charred, they were shrunken, um, but those were the organs that I, I found. And presumably the rest of the organs either burned away um, or just were never found. Okay. And were you able to identify specific bones? Yes. Uh, can you just give a, a brief summary of some of the bones you were able to identify? Yes. Uh, so in one of the large bags, there was essentially the pelvis with portions of the, at least first portion of the femur that were attached to them. So your right pelvis, left pelvis, sacrum, and then portions, small portions of the femur. In one of the other large bags, uh, we were able to find um, portions of the skull, including the uh, superior portion of the orbit, uh, where the eyeball would be, um, other fragments of the skull, uh, fragments of the mandible and maxilla, uh, with some teeth still intact. Uh, there were more, multiple vertebral uh, bodies from your vertebral column uh, that were identified, uh, both clavicles. Uh, there were multiple long bones including um, the tibia and fibula from your lower leg, uh, the radius and ulna from your forearm, a uh, portion of the sternum uh, was identified, multiple rib fragments uh, were identified. Um, and I think those were the, the main bones that were found. And again, these weren't nice, clean bones. These were bones uh, that had significant artifact secondary to uh, the fire. Okay. So when you say significant artifact, does that mean effects of the fire? Yes, they're they were blackened and charred, uh, and also um, it was presumed that some of it was, some of 
it, the artifact was due to the dismembering process as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wood, would this be a good time to be able to break? Can I ask a couple more questions? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Dr. Warren, based on your autopsy of Tyree Ryan and based upon your education, training, and experience, have you formed an expert opinion concerning the cause of death of Tyree Ryan? Yes. Uh, what is that cause of death? I determined the cause of death to be homicide by unspecified means. Uh, and homicide by unspecified means, does that have a uh, specific definition? It does. So homicide by unspecified means uh, is a term that is or can be used for the cause of death uh, when the forensic pathologist has essentially looked at the totality of the case, including the circumstances of the death, uh, the autopsy findings and lack thereof autopsy findings in this case, uh, the toxicology, and also uh, based on medical and social records, um, that the forensic pathologist, which is me in this case, um, feels that the, the cause of death was by homicide, but I just can't pinpoint exactly what that was. Most homicides, you can say something like a gunshot wound to the head when the body's intact or a stab wound to the heart. Um, I can't do that in this case. Um, and it should be noted that I guess the, the term um, homicide by unspecified means, it, it's widely used in the forensic pathology world. Um, and it's been around for decades, for several years. And there's been published articles about specific guidelines and criteria that you should follow in order to come to that conclusion. Um, so that's where that term comes from. Okay. I, Your Honor, I, we can break now and then we'll continue with okay. Dr. Warren after the lunch break. We will take the break. Uh, this time today, we'll take a full hour for lunch. Uh, give the jurors a chance to get caught up and have a little extra time today. So we'll come back on the record after lunch. Dr. Wood, if you'd like to continue at this time with direct examination, you may. The court would note all parties are present and the defendant as well and you can uh, continue to question your witness. Thank you, and just for clarity of the record, with the next exhibit, I will, as we ad admit it, uh, there will be a few uh, similar items, so. Okay. Dr. Warren, when we left, we had briefly discussed uh, your finding of a cause of homicide by unspecified means. That's correct. And you were discussing criteria uh, for uh, for reaching that conclusion. Yes. And uh, just to refresh the memory of the jury and everyone, can you can you tell us again, what is the criteria for a homicide by unspecified means? Yes. So I already discussed um, that this term is um, used or sometimes used as a cause of death. So that there are specific guidelines and criteria that are used uh, dealing with this cause of death. Um, one, it has to be objectively uh, suspicious circumstances. And examples used for the guidelines are dismembered body, um, body is burned, um, body is... Um, buried out of sight, um, and there's some other ones as well, but this case clearly fits number one. Uh, number two would be no findings at autopsy to explain the death. So it gives a couple um, examples. One is if you have a full body that's intact and you do an autopsy and there's no other cause of death to explain it based on your autopsy. Another example would be that there's not enough of the body present to determine the cause of death by way of autopsy. Uh, so that, in this particular case, that would fit the uh, uh, number two. Uh, number three would be toxicology. There's no toxicology 
that would explain the decedent's death. In this case, the, the toxicology, uh, I found no drugs or substances that would explain the decedent's death. Uh, number four would is more on the social slash um, history, uh, including medical records. There's not another reasonable explanation uh, based on medical records, social records, um, why somebody should be or could be dead. Um, so in this particular case, I felt like this felt all the met all the criteria. And that's why I called it as such. Again, it's homicide by unspecified means, meaning I believe, based on everything, that all the circumstances, autopsy, toxicology, uh, all the supporting documents, that this is a homicide. I just can't tell you exactly why. I can't pinpoint it. Doctor, did you review Tylee Ryan's medical records? I did. Uh, and... In reviewing, what did you find in her uh, medical records in terms of prior illnesses or, or sicknesses? So based on the medical records that are available to me, um, Ty Lee uh, was documented to have anxiety uh, with uh, panic attacks. Uh, she was documented to have ovarian cysts that sometimes caused her pain. Uh, she was documented to have uh, pancreatitis or recurrent pancreatitis. Uh, in her case, it often uh, her pancreatitis often flared up uh, when she took antibiotics. But um, there was, I, I believe, that in the medical records too, there's mention of an autoimmune possible autoimmune reason for pancreatitis. There's wide wide variety of reasons to have pancreatitis. Um, and then also she's known to have mesenteric adenitis, which, which would also cause her abdominal pain. So mesenteric adenitis is essentially uh, your loops of bowel you have are held together with adipose tissue. And within that adipose tissue, there's numerous lymph nodes. So typically during a viral infection, your lymph nodes will get inflamed, they'll become enlarged, it'll cause pain. Um, it's usually self-limited. Um, and I believe those were, um, at least based on the medical records that I reviewed, that was part of her medical history. Okay, and is there anything in her medical history that would provide a reasonable explanation for her death? No, not in my opinion. As part of your uh, your examination of Tyler Ryan, uh, did you collect any evidence to be sent to other labs? Yes. What was that? So I think we already mentioned uh, that I sent skeletal muscle for toxicology, and we already talked about those results. Um, in addition to that, I collected multiple um, pieces of soft tissue, uh, skeletal muscle, what I thought was liver, um, and other organs for potential DNA analysis. So you, you can use blood, you can use tissue samples, and you can potentially get DNA from those sources. Um, there was also a strand of hair in bag number two, I talked about how there were three bags uh, that uh, the remains came in. In bag number two of three, there was a single strand of hair, so we submitted that to law enforcement. Um, and there's also in, uh, I believe, bag number two, there was a, a green bucket, a melted green bucket, uh, and that was submitted to law enforcement uh, as evidence as well. Okay. Dr. Warren, did you, as part of this autopsy, uh, were photographs taken? Yes. Your Honor, I'd ask that the 
Witness be shown. State's Exhibit 177A through 177EE. Doctor, can you review states exhibit 177A through EE and let me know when you've had a chance to look over it? Yes. Okay. Do you recognize states exhibit exhibits at 177A through EE? Yes. What are they? These are photographs uh, taken at the time of the autopsy by our office. Okay. And were you were present during uh, that autopsy? Yes. And were some of those photographs even taken under your supervision? Yes. Okay. Uh, and do you recognize those photographs? Photographs as true and accurate representations of what you witnessed that day. Yes. Your Honor, I'd move for admission of State's Exhibit, State's Exhibits 177A through EE into evidence. Any objection from the defense? Yes, Your Honor, we would object that <clears throat> under Rule 403, uh, these are more prejudicial than probative. All right, thank you, Mr. Thomas. I've considered that objection. Uh, the court does need to consider whether or not the probative value of the exhibits is sufficient to overcome any possible inflammatory effect that may be had on the jury. The court does find that there is a probative value that outweighs the inflammatory nature of what these may show. So on the grounds of 403, Court determines that the objections overruled. I'll note, however, though, Mr. Wood, that is with the previous photographs, there are some photographs in here, not all of them, that I would determine in order to minimize the inflammatory effect that they could potentially have should not be displayed on the large projector screen, may be shown on the smaller monitors for the jurors. And for that reason, um, I think we've already indicated which ones I believed shouldn't be shown on the projector. Uh, apologies for the delay that may create, but we'll need to reconfigure the 
displays and projectors when we get to that point. Okay. Um, are the, is that exhibit admitted? It is. Okay. Your Honor, and just for clarity, uh, for the record, if I may now uh, list, there's a few numbers that are not in there. Okay, so we went A through EE, e, which I presume is A through Z, then starting with double A through double E. Yes. And what is not included in that exhibit? There is no 177L, 177N, as in November, 177R, 177U, 177W, and 177Y. Okay. And again, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, don't be concerned necessarily with numbers or lettering. Once you get exhibits, you'll be just uh, instructed to consider all the evidence. So with that, Mr. Wood, you can continue. I thank you. Your Honor, your, uh, your clerk did, I think, briefly show us uh, the exhibits you did not want shown on the, the large screen. I'm, I'm wondering if I could get a copy of that so I don't inadvertently. Okay. The list I've got is D through H of 177 is the first set. If you're going sequentially through the, or alphabetically through the listing. We will be. Okay. Second group, then, Mr. Wood, is um, I believe it's O through CC. Okay. Uh, may I begin to publish and then we'll? Yes. Thank you. Doctor, can you describe for the jury what you observed in State's Exhibit 177A? Yes, as I mentioned, uh, the remains um, came in three separate uh, bags. So this is labeled one of three, and you can see there's a red seal uh, through the zippers of the bag. Again, the, the seal is for to preserve evidence. Okay. And was there a number assigned uh, to Ty Ryan's case for autopsy for, for your lab? Yes. Uh, as, same with JJ. Uh, there's a ruler with the case number 200611-61, and this is the number that was assigned to uh, Ty Lee's case. And can you describe what's in State's Exhibit B? This is simply a, a close-up of the seal uh, with number 506600, showing that it's intact. Okay. Can you describe what, uh, what you observed in State's Exhibit 177C? So after we broke the seal, and open the bag. Um, within the body bag, uh, there were large clumps of uh, soft tissue and bone uh, and dirt, and there were also two brown paper bags. You can see one of them is labeled with burial site, question mark, and the other bag was unlabeled. Your Honor, on to 177D. Okay. For that next set, then, uh, I would require that, uh, again, for purposes of not making the exhibits unnecessarily inflammatory, that they not be projected onto the monitor. So, and there are two groups. If you want to keep it in order, I guess we'll reconfigure twice to do that, but we'll need to pr turn off the projector at this point.
that's what I was going to have. Yeah. Okay, we're ready to proceed. Thanks, everyone, for your assistance. Doctor, can you describe uh, what you observed in States Exhibit 177D? Yes, so we're still on bag one of three. Um, the previous photo showed you the two brown paper bags. Uh, the rest of what was in the bag is what you see. Um, it's essentially charred remains of uh, clumps of mud and dirt, soft tissue, uh, and bone. And can you tell the jury what you observed in 177E? So this is a photograph of what was in that uh, commingled uh, clump of charred tissue. Once we were able to clean off uh, the debris and the most of the decomposed tissue, um, what we have here is on the right side that's not on the blue board. Uh, we have to your far left, that's a sacrum with decomposed tissue and, and blackened charring. And then the other two bones, the middle and the right bones, that's the right and left hip bone uh, with, with a small fragment of femur that's still attached to both of them. And you can still see there is uh, blackened, charred appearance to portions of the bone, and there still is some decomposed tissue uh, that's adherent to the bone. Uh, on the blue board with the ruler, on your far left, uh, those are two small fragments of small bowel that uh, we found within the commingled remains. Um, next in line, uh, directly above the sticker that says bag one of three, those are vertebral bodies uh, from the vertebral column. And moving next, uh, the small fragments of tissue. Um, uh, two of those are small fragments of essentially unidentified. Not sure where the bone came from, but it's small, probably probably hand or foot. And then there's some small fragments of cartilage as well. Okay. So that was essentially this is the cleaned up version of what you just saw in the previous photo. Doctor, are you aware if? any of these items were sent for further testing with the FBI? 
Yes, all the skeletal remains were sent to the FBI for a forensic anthropology workup. Okay. And can you explain what you observed, observed in States Exhibit 177F? So this is still bag one of three. Uh, this is on your left, right again, right above the ruler with the sticker bag one of three. Uh, that was what was determined to be, to the best of my ability, uh, charred and decomposed soft tissue. On the right, uh, the blackened uh, chunks of tissue, uh, or I'm sorry, chunks of material, that was determined to be, those were charred uh, clumps of mud, um, uh, just ash and rock. And can you describe for the jury what you observed in States Exhibit 177G? All right, so if you remember, we're still on bag one of three. If you remember, the burial site question mark was within bag one of three. And this is what was in the uh, paper bag burial site, burial site question mark. Um, you can see it came in a foil container. Um, and there's multiple charred pieces of, of bone and other debris. Uh, you can make out to the on the far left, um, those are vertebral bodies. Uh, the remainder of the bones were just small, fragmented bones that were charred. And can you state what you observed? or tell the jury what you observed in States Exhibit 177H. Yes, so this is the cleaned up version of what you just saw within that container. Uh, on the far left are two vertebral columns, uh, or body, vertebral bodies uh, that are charred and uh, partially burned away. Uh, in the middle, there's those three fragments of small uh, bones uh, that have some uh, thermal artifact as well. Uh, in the bottom right, uh, that black material, that was determined to be more just charred ash, dirt, uh, twigs, and rock. Um, and then up in the upper right, those are just small fragments of unidentified bone that were charred. State what you, Your Honor, I don't know if the court wanted to turn the projector back on. How wants to do that? Okay. There are um, a series of four more that um, can be displayed on the projector. Actually, three more. It might be. Mr. Wood, why don't you just keep going since. There's only actually two or three more that I think shouldn't be on the projector, and then once we get through the rest of that other set, we'll convert things back to normal. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Can you state for the jury what you observed in States Exhibit 177K? Yes. So as I mentioned, uh, three bags were received. We just went over bag one of three and the contents of bag one of three, and now we're moving on to the second bag, bag two of three. Okay. What did you observe in States Exhibit 177I? <laughs> this is just uh, another photograph of how the body bag was received. Uh, body bag two of three is a suspected female. And 177J? That is the body lock. 
uh, with seal number 506564, just showing that it's intact. Can you state what you observed in States Exhibit 177M? So this is once we uh, broke the seal, opened the bag, and this is looking at one portion of what we saw uh, within bag two of three. And you can see there are just large masses and large clumps of you know, at this point, it's hard to tell, but you can tell that there is clumps of tissue. Uh, you can you can feel the bone. Um, you can also see um, if you can see some green. I'm not sure if you're aware if you can see that, but on the f the largest uh, mass of of commingled tissue, there there's some green discoloration. Um, and that was the green melted bucket that I was talking about. And just for clarity, Doctor, where I'm pointing my pen, is that part of what you're referencing? Yes. And is this part of what you're referencing? Yes. Okay. And what did you observe in States Exhibit 1770? So this is all also within bag two of three. So you can see there's more black and charred uh, masses of tissue and debris and rock and dirt. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, there's two brown paper bags. One of them is sealed with white tape. That's the far left bag. And then there's another brown paper bag that's enclosed within a clear plastic bag. And that's at the top of the screen. And what did you observe in States Exhibit 177P? So after sifting and partially cleaning through uh, the debris and the uh, remains, uh, this is a portion of what we found. Uh, the most, at the top of the screen, that's the frontal bone. So that's the top of the skull. And you can see semicircular uh, rounding off at the bottom of the skull, so that, that would be the top of your orbit. So um, that's where your your essentially your eyeballs would be. So it, it's the the top of the head. You can see there's some charring, uh, there's some dirt still on it. Um, to just to your left, on the far left, that's another large fragment of cranium. Uh, so that's a, a large. A fragment of skull that has significant charring and blackening secondary to the fire. And the most bottom uh, piece of tissue is uh, a portion of the uh, mandible and maxilla. Um, you can s you can still see that there are teeth, um, if you can recognize it. Um, it's significantly blackened and charred. Uh, but there were still some teeth that were uh, intact. And can you uh, tell the jury what you observed in 177Q? So as we mentioned before, there were some organs that were identified within that, uh, the remains. So this is the heart, right in the middle. And then on both sides of the heart are the right and left lung. So they're still attached to one another. You can see the great vessels. Um, they look like straws come, kind of coming uh, out. Uh, so th those are some of the great vessels that come off the aorta. And now this is not what a normal heart and lung looks like, just so you know. Uh, this is significantly shrunken. The heart and the lungs are both significantly shrunken. Uh, they're disrupted, they're charred, they're burned, they're falling apart. Um, 
And so that was what was found, uh, at least part of the organs that were found. And what did you observe and do in States Exhibit 177S? So again, this is just a little different view. Although the tissue, the organs are significantly obscured due to thermal injury and decomposition, you still do your best to uh, try to rule out any kind of disease process or any kind of injury. Uh, so right there in the middle, the largest piece, that is the heart. You can see it's there's uh, significant charring, uh, there's decomposition, it's kind of falling apart. And then on the right side, that's the right lung that's been sectioned serially. And on the left side, that's the left lung that's been sectioned serially. So again, the lungs are significantly shrunken. Uh, the outsides are blackened and charred. Um, and there's thermal artifact uh, within the middle of the organs. Uh, basically, your lung is typically nice and soft. Um, it had become to the point where it was like a very hard sponge. And what did you observe in States Exhibit 177T? So as mentioned earlier, one kidney was identified, and this is that kidney. Uh, very similar to the heart and the lungs. It was extremely shrunken. It was blackened. It was charred. Significant heat thermal artifact. That's essentially it. And you, can you describe what you observed in States Exhibit 177V? So this is bag two of three after it's been cleaned up. Um, so the organs are not in there, the organs that we just went over, the heart, lungs, and so forth. But these are all the bones uh, that we're able to uh, sift away and clean. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in the top right corner, uh, you can see there's these larger, flatter bones, um, and that's part of the, the skull. Um, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, there's a scapula. There's some long bones, including the uh, a tibia and fibula from the lower leg. Uh, some of the bones in the middle right b below uh, one of the large skull fragments, there's multiple rib fragments. Um, just to the left, I don't know if you can see, it's it's at the very top to the left. Uh, it's a sternum with multiple ribs coming off of it. I believe there's one, two, three, four, five uh, ribs coming off one side and two ribs coming off another side. Doctor, to clarify, is this what you're speaking about, where my pen is pointed? Yes. Okay. And then there are multi multiple other just black and charred bones that are essentially unre unrecognizable. Um, and then even further to your left um, are some smaller hand or foot bones, um, as well as burnt soft tissue or charred soft tissue in your very upper left. So basically what you're looking at is after a week of sifting through uh, bag two of three that you saw earlier, that's, those are the bones and the, the soft tissue uh, that we recovered. Can you describe uh, what you observed in States Exhibit 177X? So if you remember, there were two brown paper bags within bag two of three as well. So within that paper bag, you can see on the left, there are multiple charred pieces of bone, um, unrecognizable bone, um, most likely at the very top, those small, uh, they look like little logs. Those are likely hand or foot bones. 
Um, and that was what, what was in the, the brown paper bag. Doctor, can you describe State's Exhibit 177Z? So that was, we've completed bag two of three. Now we're moving on to bag three of three. Uh, this is a little different. The, the first two bags came in black body bags that were sealed. This came in a sealed large brown paper bag. Uh, and with in this brown paper bag, there were five smaller uh, uh, paper envelopes uh, that came within this bag three of three. All right. uh, Mr. Wood, at this point, we can continue to just project these regularly if you'd like going forward. Sure. We'll take a moment to reconfigure. doing that, I'll again mention that the victims will have an opportunity if they wish to view the photographic evidence. I'll allow the state to submit a request and we'll arrange for that. Doctor, can you describe what's in State's Exhibit 177AA? Yes, so within bag three of three, as I mentioned, there were five other smaller paper bags. This is one of them, and it has identification information, including fire pit A Northwest. Do you recall what was in that bag? Yes, in this bag and also moving forth with the four other bags, they're essentially just small fragments of unide unidentifiable charred bone. You identify State's Exhibit 177BB. So this was a second bag that was received within bag three of three. It's sealed and labeled with identification information, including fire pit B. Okay, and what was in, uh, you may have already stated it, but just for purposes of clarity for the record, what was in this bag? So there were small fragments of charred, unrecognizable bone. Can you describe what you observed in State's Exhibit 177CC? Yes. So this is a third bag within bag three of three, again with identification information. I think this, the description was suspected bone fragment. Okay. And do you recall what was in it? Again, a small uh, charred piece of unrecognizable bone. And I, when I mean unrecognizable, they were they were bone. I just couldn't say where they came from because they were so small and uh, charred and fragmented. And state, uh, can you tell the jury what you observed in State's Exhibit 177D? I'm Again, sorry, let me restate that. 177DD. D. So this is a fourth paper bag within the bag three of three, again, labeled and sealed with the description suspected bone fragments. And within this bag was also small, charred, uh, crumbly, unre unrecognizable pieces of bone. Okay. And can you describe what you observed in State's Exhibit 177EE? -E? This is the final fifth bag. Uh, that is sealed, 
uh, with identification information and uh, labeled suspected, suspected organic matter. Uh, so within this bag, there was small charred fragments of soft tissue. Were you able to identify those pieces of tissue? No. Just one moment, Your Honor. Your Honor, the state has no further questions at this time.